In today's video, we're looking at fluvial processes and really these are factors which affect the shape and the flow of rivers. And we'll be looking at things such as erosion, weathering, deposition and transportation. And unfortunately, these words do sound quite similar and you do need to know them in lots of detail. So first of all, we'll start with erosion. And really, this is the wearing away of soil and rock in riverbanks and rivers. Now there are two types of erosion, vertical and lateral. So vertical, as the name suggests, involves deepening the river. And this is mainly due to hydraulic action, which we'll talk about lots later. In terms of where you find this sort of erosion, it's mostly in the upper course of the river, so near its source. Lateral erosion, as the name suggests, involves making the river wider and it involves eroding away at those banks of the river. This is actually more common in the middle and lower courses of the river. So vertical erosion we'll see towards the start of the river, the upper course that involves making the river deeper. Lateral erosion makes the river wider and it happens more in the middle and lower courses of the river. Now there are lots of different ways in which erosion may take place. Some of these include hydraulic action, which we've just mentioned, attrition, solution, otherwise known as corrosion and abrasion. So we'll start with hydraulic action and look at that in a bit more detail. This is really due to the force of the river against the riverbanks. And what happens is there's air that is squashed within cracks and crevices found within those riverbanks, which weakens them and fundamentally leads to their erosion. Hydraulic action, as we've already mentioned, is the main source of vertical erosion. So we know that that river will get deeper as a result of hydraulic action. Next up, abrasion. Now, abrasion can be responsible for both vertical and lateral erosion, so that's making the river deeper and wider. First of all, material carried by the river scrapes away at the riverbank, hence how it makes the river wider. This also loosens material in the riverbank, meaning that that is more easily carried away by the river. Sandpaper action widens and deepens the river, and you also may see that the river gets undercut by rocks rubbing away at the bank. So again, just to mention, abrasion is responsible for both vertical and lateral erosion. Attrition now, another similar sounding word. This time it's rocks being carried by the river, knock against each other and actually cause these rocks to break apart and become smaller. How about solution or corrosion? In this case, the river water itself dissolves minerals in the riverbanks. Also, if the water is weakly acidic, it will dissolve soluble particles. And so this is a lot more gentle, but again, we can see that the river will become wider and deeper as a result of solution slash corrosion. So we've dealt with erosion now, but what about weathering? As the name suggests, it's how different types of weather may affect the river's shape and flow. There are three types we are going to look at today, mechanical weathering, biological weathering, and chemical weathering. And there is some overlap with the chemistry specification for some exam boards. So mechanical weathering, the freeze-thaw type of weathering. So what happens here is that water in very cold weather freezes within the cracks of rocks. And when that water freezes, it expands, pushing that crack wider. So you can imagine how lumps of rock will break off those riverbanks. Chemical weathering is all to do with slightly acidic rainwater, dissolving soluble particles, breaking down the rock in a more gentle way. But again, this is still a type of destruction to the riverbank. Biological weathering, biological always means to do with living organisms. Here it's plant roots which grow in small cracks of the rocks and as those roots grow bigger they widen the cracks causing it to potentially break off bits of rock. Weathering is tightly linked with mass movement because you can imagine as those small chunks of rocks break off, if this happens in a large quantity this is what we call mass movement and particularly if you have a steep slope which we'll talk about lots later you'll see a huge movement of material down those riverbanks. There are two types of mass movement. One is soil creep and one is slumping. So slumping occurs when the bottom of a valley slope is worn away by the river flowing. The slope becomes unstable and material slumps down towards the riverbed. This is particularly applicable after heavy rainfall. You can actually imagine how that material will just fall off of the side of the slope after rain, after it becomes unstable. What about soil creep? Unlike slumping, which occurs quite rapidly, soil creep, as the name suggests, is a much slower process. Rather than occurring on steep slopes, you'll see soil creep occur on gentle slopes where weathered material gathers at the bottom of the slope and then it is eroded further by the river. Now we're going to look more closely at the factors which affect weathering. And remember, mass movement is tightly linked with weathering because once weathering occurs and small bits of rock break off, that means that they're more susceptible to move as a whole. 
So what factors affect weathering and mass movement and do be prepared to explain them? So first of all, weather, obviously heavy precipitation, heavy rainfall will increase the likelihood of mass movement taking place. Next up, the slope gradient. So the steeper the slope, the more likely mass movement will take place and you're looking for slopes above five degrees in order for mass movement to take place. Climate now, hot, wet climates will encourage biological weathering because these sorts of climates, the heat, that extra water will encourage plants to grow, their roots get in the cracks, widening the cracks, increasing the chance of biological weathering, which therefore increases the chance of mass movement because we'll have small chunks of rock breaking off. Now vegetation, if you have more vegetation holding down the topsoil, and this has the knock-on effect of decreasing mass movement. Now we consider altitudes. So at higher altitudes, you'll find colder temperatures. Colder temperatures are linked with mechanical weathering. So at very cold temperatures, you're more likely to find that water and rocks will freeze, causing that expansion of the cracks, meaning the bits of rock break off. So remember, that's the freeze-thaw weathering. And again, that will increase mass movement. Last up, the geology. So we're really looking at rock type here. Now, very hard rocks such as granite are less prone to weathering, meaning that mass movement is less likely to take place. Limestone, which is a lot more porous, it's very easily affected by acid rain because remember that calcium carbonate dissolves in the slightly acidic rainwater. This is going to break down far more easily. You're going to get small chunks which break off, increasing the chance of mass movement. Transportation now transport that means the movement of substances so really transportation in a river setting means how material is moved down a river there are different ways of transportation one is saltation one is solution and the last two are suspension and traction so always bear in mind what is the umbrella term well we're talking about transportation so how does saltation lead to material being moved downstream well you have small sand sized particles so very tiny particles which are moved downstream by the river, and that is saltation. Suspension, this is when small particles are held within the water itself and they're just carried naturally downstream. Traction is when the heaviest material that's sunk to the bottom of the riverbed is rolled along the riverbed. And then finally solution, materials are dissolved in the water and then carried along naturally in this way. Deposition. This is the laying down of material transported by a river. Let's try and think about where this is most likely to take place. So where is that material going to be laid down? Well, hopefully it seems fairly straightforward that this would occur most likely where the river speeds are slower to give it time to, for the material to be deposited, where there's less discharge, so less water flowing through the river at any particular point, and fundamentally where there's less energy. So a good place for this is where the river mouth meets the sea. So what sort of things, we kind of already mentioned them, but what sort of things affect deposition? So that will be sediment size, it will be the presence of any confluences, it could be any natural barriers or blockages in the river. If there's low rainfall, meaning less discharge, the gradient of the river will affect it. So obviously a shallower gradient will mean less deposition. Now we're going to look at some past paper questions. State one physical factor that influences deposition in a river. So remember, deposition is the laying down of material transported by a river. You have so many options here. You could talk about sediment size, river speed, gradient, the presence of any confluences, if there's a blockage or any kind of barrier. But they only want one factor, so I'm going to go with sediment size. Explain how abrasion erodes the river channel. Abrasion is a type of erosion. So obviously that's gonna to lead to the river being scraped away, becoming wider and deeper. But we need quite a specific answer here for the two marks. So first of all, we're going to start by stating that material carried by the river scrapes away The riverside creating a wider channel. You could be really specific and talk about sandpaper action widens and deepens the river. Explain one weathering process in a river valley. So do you prefer the freeze-thaw weathering? Do you prefer talking about 
biological weathering, which is all to do with roots growing into small cracks, or maybe even chemical weathering, which is acidic rainwater, which breaks down some of the rocks. So it's up to you, but just pick one and explain it properly. I'm going to go with mechanical weathering. So this occurs when water enters cracks in the rocks. The water freezes when it's really cold. And when it freezes and turns into a solid, it expands, which forces the cracks in the rock wider, and sometimes they break off.